What's up, family? Peace and blessings. Yes, yes, we're back in another video, man. This one's gonna be about uh, seven signs someone in your life is under demonic influence, man. This one's gonna be a classic, certified classic, man. Let's get it, let's go. I'm gonna wait for people to get in here. I haven't been re really been making videos for the past two weeks. Been super busy, and also I was out of the state. But it's just it's time, guys. It's time. It's ready. It's time to do the work. Um, I've been consistent on YouTube for the past like two, three years, and it feels weird, you know, to be two weeks. And not really been making content, but we're back. Uh, seven signs, guys. Seven signs. Someone in your life is under demonic influence. This video is gonna save someone's life. This video is gonna equip you with wisdom, knowledge. Your your discernment is going to be increased. Your understanding is gonna be increased. So you can see you can see the schemes of the enemy. Because remember, uh, we're not battling against flesh and blood. This is what a lot of people, ninety nine point nine 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 percent of people on this earth, they really believe that we're dealing with human beings. They believe that we're dealing with the person that we're battling with or whatever the case is, but no, this is spiritual wickedness in high places. This is uh, demons using people. This is the tares and the wheats being divided, okay? Um, what's up, what's up? Happy Sabbath, oh yeah, Sabbath day, yep. Yes, sir, what's up? Happy Sabbath day to you too. I just woke up like 10 minutes ago, guys. <laughs> Phoenix, what's up, Phoenix? Thank you for becoming a member. Uh, what's up, CR, finally coming alive. What's up, Enemy Free Christ, what's up, man? What's up, uh, Andrew S, what's up, MJ Fraser? What up, Big, what up, DJ? What's up, Timothy? What's up, man? Peace and blessings. What's up, Derek Jackson? What's up, JC Ramirez? I'm doing great, guys. God is good. God is good. Also, I'm rocking my brother's shirt, JR, the kid. Um, he says the fruits of the spirit right there. And I'm like on my toes right now, guys. But yeah, thank you for sending me this shirt. Anyways, let's get it. Let's go, man. Let's get it. Where did my marker go? Where did my marker go? All right, number one sign, guys. Number one, guys. <laughs> I'm telling you, this video is going to save someone's life. I'm telling you, man. Don't forget to like the video if you guys are just tuning in. Don't forget to like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Let's get it. Let's go. All right. So number one. All right. So number one is... So the number one sign someone is under demonic influence, you can no longer reason with them. And what do I mean by that? You can no longer reason with them. I was watching the Brother Newbreed's uh, live stream he did a couple of days ago, and he was talking about how when you could no longer reason with someone, it's because they're spiritually dying or they're you know already spiritually dead. This is so true. Okay, guys, this is so true. You have to recognize the signs when you can no longer reason with someone, when you can no longer pour in logic, no longer pour in truth. Um, you can you can no longer they you can no longer speak to them. You speak life into them. It's because they're spir they're already spiritually dying or they're already spiritually dead. Okay, what did Jesus tell us? He says, "Let the dead bury the dead." Okay, so when we see someone who's spiritually dead, we're not called to. Uh, plan, uh, we're not called to cast our pearls on the swine. We're not called to preach to them. They're already dead, okay? Let the dead bury the dead, but the, go thou and preach the kingdom of God. Woo! Okay, so there's also a Bible verse too where Christ was speaking, they have eyes. This verse just came up to my head right now, so I'm gonna read it. I didn't even plan to say this verse, but this is this just came up pop right now. All right, so this is Matthew chapter 13, verse 15 uh, to 17. It says, for this people's heart is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes have they closed. At least at any time should they see with their eyes and hear with the ears and should understand with their heart and she be converted and I should heal them. Okay, it says, but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. Okay. And this is, this is Christ speaking. See, so he says, For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see the things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and I have not heard them. So when someone said the audio is a bit low, can you all hear me? Can it, is everything good, guys? Can, can you guys hear me well? Someone said the audio is low. Hopefully that guy's not trolling because that is, um, that's how you get blocked, man. Everyone's saying the audio is good. So maybe, maybe, someone's I look robotic. What the heck? <laughs> All right. That's probably just a troll because I made sure to test this before I went live. Yeah, that guy's just trolling. Anyways, okay. So that was in Matthew chapter 13, verse 15. Matthew chapter 13, verse 15. 
Okay, so Okay, so they're spiritually dead, guys, or they're spiritually dying, okay? And we're not called to save those type of people, all right? Remember, Jesus says, let the dead bury the dead, okay? So I know a lot of people will, will hear that and will be like, Mark, well, Jesus will never say that. Well, he did, okay? <laughs> he did, all right? Um, I'm not saying that you can't pray for the individual. I'm not saying that you got to hate the individual. That's a waste of, that's a, hating, and that's a waste of energy, okay? But um, you trying to save someone who doesn't want to be saved, it's just not not a good look for you, okay? So always keep this in mind, man. When you can no longer reason with the individual, that is a red flag, okay? Um, that's also a sign that the demonic influence because when you can't reason with someone, you're gonna find yourself arguing, going back and forth, and there's gonna be no solutions because if you're arguing with someone, if you're going back and forth with someone, there has to be some type of solution being formed, okay? Like this person's, you know, okay, what am I doing wrong or what could I do right or what could we do to better our, our friendship or our relationship or our business, whatever the case is, right? And you guys are just arguing all the time and there's no solutions being formed, okay? There's no accountability, that's something no accountability, yep. And I'm gonna talk about that more towards the end of the video, but there's no accountability. It's just no, nothing is getting solved, but you just keep on arguing, okay? So you just can no longer reason with the individual. And then when you try to, okay, like, okay, this is not working and they don't wanna let you go or you don't wanna let them go. This is not a good idea. Um, this is not a good sign for you to um, to be going back and forth, okay? Uh, because I'm gonna say that's draining, okay? You, you need your energy, guys, to do the will of God, okay? That takes energy. To do God's will, it takes energy, okay? To seek God's kingdom daily and his righteousness, that is energy. It takes requires energy to do that. So when someone's draining you, when someone's keeping you down in the pit, Okay, when someone's keeping you down, you know, down there, and remember, you are responsible for someone doing that in your life. You are responsible because, hey, we are we pick and choose who we want to come in our life. We could allow them in or we could, you know, so we got to use your discernment, okay? So when someone's keeping you, I told you guys at the beginning of this video, your discernment is going to increase after you watch this video. And I, I just started. <laughs> we got six more signs to go, okay? So always keep that in mind, man. Like, when, when you can no longer reason with the individual, sign of them being spiritually dead, let them go. Let the dead bury the dead. Keep it pushing, keep preaching the kingdom of God, all right? Because that's the whole goal of the enemy, all right? The enemy does not want you to see God's kingdom. The enemy does not want you to do the will of God. The enemy does not want you to preach the truth, okay? He wants to keep you in darkness. He wants to keep you in bondage. And he's going to use someone who's under his influence, okay? The kingdom of darkness, Satan's kingdom, uh, princess, spiritual wickedness in high places, evil spirits, unclean spirits, whatever. He's going to use them, okay? And some people are just so... They're so emotional, okay? They're gonna allow their emotions to roll over them, okay? They're gonna allow their, they're gonna allow, you know, there's some people, guys, they read certain verses in the Bible or they read certain laws of God, okay? And they saw that that law, God's law, is going against their belief system and they don't wanna, they don't wanna believe the Bible no more. They don't wanna believe the law no more. And again, um, again, God showed me something about the importance of keeping God's laws. I was just in Vegas, Las Vegas, a couple of days ago. And, you know, me and my friend were there and we were just seeing just lawlessness. We were just seeing so much corruption. And, and I mean, if you guys have been to Vegas, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? And, you know, I realized, I was like, well, the reason why Vegas, Las Vegas is the way it is is because it's lawlessness, okay? Uh, Nevada, the whole, the whole state of Nevada is legalized prostitution. You have uh, ladies of the night walking all around. I mean, it's just, you have people dressing up like devils and demons, people taking pictures of them. Like, it's cool to do that. And it's all lawlessness, okay? And, you know, so look at the world we live in today, guys. Yeah, someone said, Cindy, yep. Look at the world we live in, to, uh, live in today, guys. It's lawlessness. No one's following God's laws no more, okay? God's laws were created to, to, to increase righteousness so we wouldn't fall into the world we live in today where it seems like everybody's, you know, most people are possessed with a demonic spirit. What's up, Simona? And that, that's what it seems like, okay? So that's what happens, guys, when people are not following God's laws, they're going to find themselves, you know, especially with people speaking against it. You see a lot of people in the, the Christianity faith who will tell you, who will like demonize the law. You know, now, of course, we're not, we don't receive salvation through God's laws. We receive salvation through Christ. Okay. That's, that's obvious, but it doesn't mean that you don't keep God's laws because look at the world we're living in today. Okay. Lawlessness, sin. Okay. So that's number one. 
You can no longer reason with them, okay? This is a sign you have to pay attention to, guys. Spiritually dead, okay? And I always advise people too, uh, the people who are coming in, into your life or, um, or you know, maybe the future potential person, whatever, uh, you should always pray and, you know, about it and um, see if that person is fit to be in your life. Are they, you know, if you're a man, you want someone, for like a relationship wise, you want someone who's going to help you, you know, a helpmate. That's what Eve was created for. So, um, you know, someone who's going to help you, whatever you're doing, whatever you got going on, is going to help you get to the next level. Okay. Or if you're a woman, you want a man who is going to, you know, lead you to the right way, you know, but in order for him to lead, lead you, he has to have Christ. He has to have the most high in his life. So you got to be able to pick and choose and use your discernment to who's, who's coming in life and who's not. But as, as a man, you got to be able to lead. Okay. As a woman, you got to be able to listen. You don't want to be like the person you can't reason with because that's also, you know, like the sign of someone being spiritually dead. So, you know, those are just some gems I, I came up with just off the top of the head. But next one, next one, number two is, and if you guys can get the likes up, it's free to do that. All right, get the likes up, get the likes up. Also, uh, the people left super chats and membership, man. I'm so sorry I can't read them because if I read the super chats, I might forget what I'm saying. So just understand, I appreciate y'all leaving super chats, y'all becoming members. Thank you so much. Okay, so number two is you can no longer make peace with them. And, you know, the Bible says that, um, uh, let me read that verse. Okay, so... This is straight from the Holy Bible. All right, uh, Hebrews. I thought that was in Romans. Good thing I checked this up. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, it says, Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Okay? So follow peace with all men. Okay? So when you're trying to reason with the individual and you're trying to make peace, okay, hey, you know, let's come up with solutions. Because when, when there's nothing but problems and nothing but solutions, it's going to be hell. Hell is going to be cost, all right? When everybody is just problems, 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 and there's no problem solvers, okay? There's no one trying to come up with a solution to the problem that's that's causing whatever it is in your friendship, your business, or your relationship, okay? Um, and no one's causing any, no one's coming up with any solutions. There's going to be no peace, bro. There's going to be no peace, all right? And there's also a verse to... Um, Oh, yeah, it says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. So when you try to make peace with an individual, okay, when you try to reason with the individual, when you're trying to pour out, you know, and see, when you're pouring out to someone, guys, okay, your cup gets empty. So that kind of like drains you. So if you're pouring up to someone who's an empty cup, when you're, pour, when you're trying to fill someone up, when you're, when you're, when you're casting your pearls in the swine, when you're, um, you know, trying to reason with someone who's spiritually dead or spiritually dying, you are draining yourself. Okay? You, you are draining yourself. And if you can't make peace with the individual, bad things are going to happen, guys. Okay? When you're dealing with someone who's under demonic influence, okay, whether they have a devil in their ear, you know, because of evil communications corrupt good manners, Okay, uh, maybe because they're friends with the world, and we all know the friends of the world is the enemy of God. Okay, so if someone is the enemy of God and they're coming into your life and y'all hanging out together, y'all sleeping next to each other, right? Then that's an enemy. Okay, that's the enemy in your life. Okay, someone said just let them go. You know, and that's yeah, true. Yeah, just let them go, but it depends. Sometimes you got ties with these individuals, sometimes y'all got children with these individuals, sometimes these people are business partners. You can't just let them go like that. You know, you know, y'all been together for like, you know, y'all been partners, whatever, uh, for years, you know, decades. It's not just, you can't just let the person go just like that. So this video is to induce thought and also to not get yourself in this situation. Okay. Not to get yourself in this situation. I told you guys before this video start, it's going to save someone's life. Okay. Someone said there's 666 views. Oh, heck no. Wait, hold up. <laughs> oh, I see it. Okay. Now it's 670. Okay. Go. Yeah. We ain't, we ain't staying in that number. Okay, someone said, judge them by their fruit. Yep. Someone says, in modern times, it's called narcissism and psychopaths. Yeah, you know, that's modern times. But, you know, us being, you know, us being Bible believers, we know that's all demonic possession. Okay. We all, we all know that's just demonic possession. So, yeah, you could call it narcissism, whatever. But uh, someone says, I'm at 667. Someone says, 667. No, yeah, I don't, we don't want to stay on that. <laughs> 
We, we don't, we don't want to stay on that. Someone says, is this video going to stay up? Yeah, it's going to stay up. Of course it is. Um, yeah, this video is going to stay up. Thank you, Martin Messenger, for your for the blessings, love, and knowledge from the most side. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you for watching, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, man. Um, what if it's your mother? Ooh, you know, well, if y'all live together, the Bible says to honor your father and mother. I understand, um, you know, we're, we're always going to clash with our parents. You know, we're not always going to see the eye to eye, but that's what the scripture says, guys. It says if you want to live long on this earth, to honor your father and mother. Uh, I understand that you can't have a mom. You can't have a dad. I'm saying this respectfully. That is a witch. That is a wizard. That is a warlock. That could be a Freemason. You, you maybe were uh, raised in a cult family. Okay, but the scripture says to honor your father and mother. I would say personally, if I was in that situation, I would move out. Now, some of you guys are in high school. Some of you guys are, you know, teenage years. Um, the only thing you really do in that situation is just to pray for them. You know, there's nothing else you could do. Okay, but yes, I know a lot of people hit me up. Mark, you know, my, my parents are Freemasons and witches and gang stalkers, all that, man. You know, and they're still in high school. You know, the only thing you could do, guys, is literally just pray for them. There's nothing you could do because you're still under, you're under 18. Okay, so... Now, I know now this new age we're living in, you know, people, I see people 16, 17, they got their own apartment. That's people 14 working jobs. Y'all lucky, man. <laughs> I wish it was like that for me back in my days. But anyways, you can no longer make peace with them. And um, 12, 14. Okay, man, this video is going to be so good. I was going to make this an actual video, but no, nah, I haven't made it live in a minute. So I wanted to do this live, build with y'all or whatnot. Um, okay, so so I told you about what number two, you can no longer make peace with them. Okay, so number three is going to correlate to number two. So, and this right here, guys, is gonna this is a hundred percent, a hundred percent demons, bro. I'm telling you, man, you got to know how demons work. Are they? Because a demon does not want peace. A demon feeds off of chaos. Okay, hold on. Before I write that down, I'll tell you guys how. Oh, what's up, Chuba? Thank you for the super. I haven't seen you in a minute, man. Thank you, man. You've been rocking with my channel for like four years, bro. I, I, I remember you, man, back in the days. Thank you, bro. But this is how demons work, guys. When someone has a demon, when someone's under the demonic influence, okay, there's no way they can make peace with you. Okay, now this is not even number three. This is off the top of the head. I don't want to forget, so I'm going to say this right now. When someone has demonic spirits, unclean spirits, whatever you want to call it, okay, demonic, uh, under the influence of, you know, demons, okay, best believe 100%, 100%, okay, you cannot make peace with that. That, that demon in them will not allow it. They're going to look, they're going to, hold on. <laughs> I was speaking too fast, speaking too fast. Hold on, hold on. A dirty house, unclean spirits. Yeah, it's Kenza. Yep, that's facts. Always keep your house clean, guys. Keep the dishes clean. Uh, even the bathtub, the toilet, uh, your room. You know, always make sure you have you know have a clean house. Every time, guys, I went into a house that was unclean, like I'm telling you, like dirty. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be OCD spotless or like that. But when like it's just dirty, you can barely walk in. There's definitely spirits in the house, guys. Yep, that's true. That's true. Okay, someone said, what are my thoughts on fasting for 24 hours um, or for less than 24 hours? Uh, you could do that. Personally, a biblical fast is at least 24 hours. But if you're just doing a fast because um, maybe, you know, there's a lot of reasons why people do fast for under 24 hours. Dieting, you know, maintaining your weight, uh, things of that nature. So if you're doing it for God, I personally will go 24 hours. But if you're doing it for any other purposes which is perfectly fine. Then there's nothing wrong with fasting for like 20 hours or whatnot. I was actually doing that for almost a year back in 2021 uh, because it was my diet routine and that was the most healthiest I've ever been. So fasting, only eating like one, two meals a day is super important if you want to maintain your health. Anyways, number three, when peace is made, they will, so when you actually make peace, when you actually come up with a solution, okay, because you're a child of God, you want to make peace. You don't want to cause turmoil. You don't want to cause hell. You don't want to uh, see people sad or none of that, man. You don't want that for an individual. So when you actually make peace, 
What someone who's under demonic influence is going to do, they will look for problems to stir up turmoil. They will look for problems, okay? They will look for problems. This is also a sign someone is defiled, someone is corrupt. They will look for problems, guys. Can you believe that? Y'all just made peace. Y'all happy, y'all smiling. Whether the person is fake happy, fake smiling, who knows, okay? But you're happy, that's all that matters at the end of the day, okay? So you're happy, that person is appearing to look happy, things are going good, okay? Things are going great, y'all traveling, y'all, y'all, you know, doing whatever, right? And then a week, two weeks later, a couple days later, then, then you know, they're looking for problems. They're, they're, they're literally, and this is demonic spirits using them to look for problems. A hundred percent, guys. A hundred percent. This is the spirits using them. Okay, it's not them doing it, guys. It's not them doing it. It's just, you know, when people are fools, okay, even the Bible says, there's a Bible verse that says that, uh, a, a wicked woman tears down her house with her own hands and a, and a righteous woman, she builds up her house with, she builds up her house. Okay. So with your own hands, you could tear down something, man. You could tear down something that you, that you have been building for years, months, decades, etc. Okay. Literally guys, with your hands, they could tear it down it, a whole building. Okay. Even the Bible says that your tongue is, um, it, 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 it's, you know, in James chapter three, it talks about how the steering wheel ship, right? You see how there's like a, you know, the ships y'all see out in the ocean that weigh thousands of pounds. I don't know the exact amount, but they're huge, right? And the steering wheel is like maybe, what, five to 10 pounds, 15 pounds, 20 pounds, somewhere around that, but it's controlling the whole entire ship, okay? So that's the same thing with our tongue. I'm not gonna stick my tongue out, but my tongue is very small and my body is huge compared to my tongue but my tongue is able to steer the ship. It's able to steer where I'm going, okay? It's the same thing, your mouth has, has, has power, bro. You could literally destroy something with your words, okay? You could destroy um, a friendship, a relationship, uh, your life. You could destroy your life with your tongue. So always be conscious of what's coming out of your, your, your mouth because if you speak blessings, you'll, you'll, you'll get those blessings. If you speak curses and death, you're gonna get that, that's what you're gonna reap. So always make sure that things that's coming out of your mouth is, is blessings, is goodness, okay? It's truth, okay? Always keep that in mind. Also, what you do to individuals always comes back to you. Some people call it karma, I call it God's judgment. You know, the world will call it karma, right? Uh, but that's just God's judgment. This is why you should, I, me personally and, and anybody else, you should never do evil. You should never seek to it. You should never plot and plan it to do someone because that's going to come back to you, okay? And it's going to come back to you 10 times worse than what you did to someone. That's how it works. This is how God works. He's going to make sure that you pay. I, I, I learned this all the time, guys. All the time I learned this, okay? Let's say for, 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 for example, right? You still something got, you still something like a candy bar at the grocery store, right? Uh, so that candy bar is maybe, well, let's give a better example. You steal uh, Xbox, right? I just saw my controller, so I just say Xbox. You steal Xbox with the Xbox Series X, is what, like 500 bucks? So you steal that, right? A couple days, couple months, or whenever, it could be years down the line, okay? You're gonna lose $2,000. You're somehow gonna lose $2,000, okay? That, that's, how, that's how it works, and it's not a coincidence because you so, what you reap, you sow. You sold 500 for someone, you're gonna lose even more than that. That's why you should never do evil to people or, or and at all because it's gonna come back to you. Always keep that in the back of your mind. This is the fear of God, guys. This is the fear of God. Okay, when you fear God, you're gonna shun evil. When you fear God, you're gonna think twice before you do something. You know, whether it's not even not even just good, but also obviously also bad too as well. Okay, you're gonna think twice. When you do good, God blesses you twice, okay? Now, I'm just saying this for a teaching perspective or a teaching example. I'm not saying this to boast of myself. I'm just giving you guys an example. This happened a couple of weeks ago just to show you guys how God works. I'm not looking for clout or praise. I really don't care about any of that, but I'm showing you guys. A brother reached out to me. He said that his, his bill was gonna go off. Uh, his PG&E bill was gonna go off or uh, by a certain time. I saw his message late and I was like, hey, you know, yeah, send me the Zelle. And I, you know, gave him what he what he asked for, and I can't make this up, guys. The next day, someone gives me triple the amount that I just gave him out of nowhere. I mean, this is God, bro. You can't tell me that's not God. What you do to other people comes back to you ten times. 
The same with the good and the bad too. So always choose to be good. Don't be a selfish energy. A lot of people you see out here in this world in this matrix are very selfish. They're all about themselves. They only think about themselves. This is why they're not blessed. This is why they, they struggle in life because they're selfish. It's all about themselves. Okay. Always be a loving spirit. Always be kind to people. Always, you know, if you have it in your pocket, never, never hesitate to give. It's just at the end of the day, it's just a tool anyways. But some people are so selfish. They're all about themselves. They're greedy. Okay. They're not trying to help somebody. They're not trying to, you know, get, to, they're, not, they're not trying to help. So what makes you think God's going to help you if you don't try to help no one else? God ain't going to help you, bro. Or sis. He's not because you're only thinking about yourself. Okay, so you don't want to be selfish, okay, especially in these last days when the mark of the beast is coming, you know, uh, and this is not to push fear, this is just what's going to happen, okay, we see the programming, we see the agenda, anyone who has eyes to see, anyone who's awake, okay, so we clearly see, you know, this, what's, what's, what, what, what the whole plan, the, the quote-unquote elites are, so we know what's coming, right, so what happens, guys, if the banks close down and the cash becomes useless and they enroll out the CBDC digital currency, which I've been speaking on for years now, or actually just a year or two. But, you know, they enroll that out and you can't buy or sell unless you get that, you know, Satan's chip, the mark of the beast. And you don't want to sell out. You don't want to take the mark of the beast. But you're, you're, you're fearful and you've been selfish the whole entire time. You didn't give to nobody. You didn't help nobody. When you saw the homeless person on the street and you had money in your pocket, you didn't even look twice at him. You saw him crying. You saw him starving. You didn't give a damn about him. You think God's going to give a damn about you when, when your stomach is starving? When you didn't give it? No, he's not. He's going to turn his eye on you. And I know a lot of you guys who are emotional, you're going to say, well, God will never do that. And I'm going to prove it to you with the Bible verse. Because I know some people, the emotional people, God will never do that. All right, let me prove it. This is deep, bro. The Bible is so deep, man. So um, this is uh, Proverbs 28 to 27. Okay, so it says, He that given to the poor shall not lack. Ooh! He that giveth to the poor shall not lack, but he that hide his eyes shall have many a curse. Ooh! So, wait, wait, let me read this again. Proverbs chapter, and this is also another verse I want to look at too, but Proverbs chapter 28, verse 27 says, he that giveth to the poor shall not lack. Okay, so when you're always, when you're always being a blessing, when you're not being a selfish energy, you'll never lack. You'll always, you'll always have what you need. Okay, but he that hide his eyes shall have many a curse. Check that out. There's also another one, another preset I want to give y'all. Okay, so Proverbs chapter, this is how you know. This is how you know, guys. God is dealing with those who help the poor, who help the homeless, who help the needy. God is dealing with those individuals. And those people who are selfish, those people who don't want to give, don't want to help, that's all to themselves, those people are cursed. I just gave you all the verse. Okay, next one. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 13 says, Whoso stop his ear at the cry of the poor, he shall also cry himself, but shall not be heard. Ooh! You know, there's a Bible verse that says that, you know, um, those who sow in tears shall reap joy, okay? Um, but it also says, Whoso stop his ears at the cry of the poor, he shall also cry himself, but shall not be heard, okay? So when the, when the poor is crying out for, for help and need for, you know, for whatever, right? And you, ha you have the opportunity to help them, but you don't want to do it because you're selfish, okay? There's going to be a time when you're in that person's shoes, you know? Uh, you're crying, you're in need, and God's not going to hear you. He is not going to hear you, man. Just gave you all the verse. Proverbs chapter 20, 21, verse 13. Okay, so you net, so more of the story. I had to stop this whole video because I, it's, God's working right now, guys. The Holy Spirit is speaking. Okay, uh, be, be generous, guys. Don't be selfish. Be a giver. Okay, remember, God loves a, cheerf, a cheerful giver. Okay, so number three, when peace is made, they will look for problems to cause turmoil. And that's just demons, man. That's all it is. Demons using them okay uh demons use those who don't have wisdom demons use those who don't take accountability demons use those who don't have god or jesus in their life uh, demons use those who are hypocrites you know the religious spirits hypocrites the pharisees this i mean demons use many i can the list goes on okay but 
Always understand that, man. Thank you so much for the super chat, Crypto TKO. Do you take email questions? Got a long one. Uh, I don't take. I don't have an email address active right now. If you could reach out to me on Instagram at Mark the Messenger um, on my Instagram, hit, hit me up on there. Hit me up on there. I'm gonna start using Instagram more too. Okay. Um, so number four. Okay, especially if you're in the faith and you're dealing with so-called brothers and sisters. Remember, the Bible says that the wheats and tares they're gonna come together. For you know they're gonna grow to, sorry they're gonna grow together but when this, when God you know brings back His Son and the angels okay we're gonna be divided we're gonna be separated okay so um, number four says and uh, best believe guys <laughs> I, I, man man I gotta, I gotta I, <laughs> best believe guys on on your on your journey you're gonna have a lot of people who profess to be Bible believers who who say shalom. Um, call themselves Christians, Israelites, you know, they know God's Hebrew name, Yahuwah, or they know the son's Hebrew name, Yeshua. They speak all this good talk, right? All this good religious talk. But their fruits don't back it up. Their fruits don't back it up. It's fake. It's phony. Just like the frauds, the Pharisees, you know, a lot of people know, a lot of people talk about Pharisees and scribes and stuff like that, but no one talks about the religious spirit. Okay. Yes, the religious spirit is tied to the Pharisees, but a lot of people had the religious spirit and religious spirits don't know God. Okay. It's funny how when I go live, everybody wants to hit up my phone, bro. Every everyone wants to hit up my phone. I might have to put my phone on do not disturb. But anyways, okay, so um yeah man, the religious spirit, that's that that's what um that's that's what they do. Okay. Um they're hypocrites. So number four You guys can too. Get the likes up. I'm glad we're not at uh, 666 views no more, man. Um, glad at that. What's up, Beth? They call him Mark. What's up, <laughs> Joseph Justice? What up, man? Uh, Jayla says, please pray for me. You always speak on topics that I'm currently trying to get through and understand. God bless you, Mark. Your channel and Bible and my Bible has been helping me get through every single day. That's what's up, Jayla. Dad, definitely keep Jayla in your prayers. Prayers, but I want to say this, uh, Jayla. Um, when you're not living in, and I'm not saying you are. I'm just, I'm speaking to everybody, not just you. Uh, for people who ask for prayers, okay. You want to get to a level where your prayers. Well, I'm not saying that other people can't pray for you. We, you, we should want other people to pray for us because you know sometimes we're not even praying for ourselves. So it's good to have other people praying for you. But I'm just saying this: when you're not living in sin, when you're on fire for God, okay. Um, I'm not saying that you don't need other people's prayers, but your prayers should be the main thing that you, you're seeking. Your prayers, okay? Uh, you shouldn't be, I, I'm not, please don't twist my words, guys. I'm not saying that other people, you shouldn't be praying for other people. I understand the scripture does say we're supposed to, you know, uh, pray without keys and, and pray for our brothers and sisters. I'm not against that, okay? But I'm just saying you want to get to a level where your prayers, where you're, you're, you rely on your own prayers, okay? Uh, and you do this when not living in sin. You do this by getting away the wicked out of your life, the evil out of your life, separating yourself, getting on isolation. This is a level you want to get on, guys, uh, at a certain point on your walk where you're relying on your prayers. Okay, There's a lot of people who reach out to me, pray for me, pray for you, but I ask myself, are they praying for themselves? Okay, Because if you're living in sin, okay, we all know the Bible says that God hears not sinners. Okay, Let me read this verse because every time I say that, Mark, where does it say in the Bible? People get mad at me. All right, so let's go over the Bible verse. Okay, so it says in John chapter 9, verse 31, it says, Now we know, now we know that God heareth not sinners, okay? But if any man be a worshiper of God and do his will, him he heareth. Okay, so just clearly, um, man, they blowing up my phone, man. Uh, they, 
Uh, so clearly it says, you know, now we know God here, not sinners. People told me, oh, Mark, you're taking it out of context. I don't know how. It makes it very clear. Jesus makes it very clear. Okay. Uh, so you want to get on a level where you're fired up. You're not living in willful sin. Okay. You're following. You're keeping God's commandments. You're following. Today's a Sabbath day. You're doing what you have to do as a man or a woman to, you know, walk this straight and narrow path. And like I said, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have other people praying for you. It's so important to have that because there's many times, guys, back in the days where I wasn't praying for myself, but someone was praying for me. My grandma was praying for me. She would always pray for me. Um, even before YouTube, you know, I had someone praying for me, my mom, my dad, somebody. Okay. And I, I truly believe that their prayers for me was what kept me preserved, what kept me from evil, um, what kept me on the path, literally. So yeah, we should be praying for people. And I, Jayla, I will definitely be praying for you. And, and I hope everybody else here is too as well. Okay. Um, but anyways, number four is when someone is under demonic influence, remember the religious spirits, you're as a warrior of God, as a warrior of Christ, um, you have to understand that your biggest enemies, they're not going to be worldly people, guys. Not, not to say that they can't. They can't be your enemies. It's not going to be um, the outsiders, you know, the people who are like uh, Hindu, New Agers, um, Muslims, Islam. It's not going to be them, guys. It's not going to be them. It's going to be the people of your own household, okay? It's going to be people who profess that they know God, that they know Jesus, okay? I just gave you all the verse, okay? Um, also... No, let me actually give you guys this verse. Okay. Uh, this is a lot of people, guys. <laughs> this is a lot of people, bro. Hypocrites. Okay. So Titus chapter 1 verse 16. They profess that they know God, but in their works deny him. Being abominable and disobedient and to every good work reprobate. Okay. So they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. Okay. Being abominable. And disobedient and to every good work reprobate. Okay, that's Titus chapter 1, verse 16. Okay, so this is what the religious spirits will do. Okay, they will use God, okay, or Yahuwah, you know, or Jesus or Yeshua, right? And Bible verses to rebuke and to condemn, but are hypocrites. And as in, I spelled that wrong. Okay, as in, they will rebuke and condemn you for something that they're doing. The only difference is that when they do it, they're, they're hiding it. Okay. The only difference is they're, you know, they're, they're hypocrite. Okay. So they profess that they know God. They could claim a good talk. They could claim all this type of stuff. Right. But at the end of the day, it's fake. It's phony. Okay. And they're under demonic influence. And one of the main reasons of this guys, one of the main reasons I'll show you what it is. This is why guys, this right here, this was the fall of Satan, guys. Pride. That was one of the first sins. Okay, pride, not humble. Okay, so let's go over with the, the Apocrypha. Okay, I'm also going to be doing a video pretty soon, guys, the lost books of the Bible. Um, that's going to be a classic, too. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you have the notifications on for that. I'm going to make that next week. Okay. Um, okay, so this is an Ecclesiasticus. Okay, this is, this is in the Apocrypha. All right, so, so it says, For pride is the beginning of sin, and he that hath it shall pour out abomination. And therefore the Lord brought upon them shrimp calamities and overthrew them utterly. So for pride is the beginning of sin. It's the beginning of everything I'm about to show you. Okay, pride is the beginning of us being spiritually dead or spiritually dying. It's pride. The Lord says to be humble. Okay, so when someone's prideful, arrogant, self-righteous, of course they're gonna they're gonna point cast stones at you, but they're not gonna cast stones at themselves. Okay, and a lot of these people too are favoritism. They're gonna pick when they have their friends, okay, that they like, that they love or whatever, and that when they're when they're living in sin or whatever, they're not gonna rebuke them. They're gonna rebuke the one who's doing the will of God. They're gonna rebuke the righteous one. You righteous people, you're gonna go through hell on this earth. The people who are wicked, the people who are living for the world and you know don't have nothing to do with God, they're, they're they live like kings and, and queens on this earth. It seems like they don't get no pushback. They get they get blessed by because Satan could bless you too. Let me tell you that the devil could bless you too, man. It seems like they're getting blessed by the, they don't have to deal with no nothing. But the, someone who's who's trying to do the right thing, it seems like we face hell, and that's and that's the devil, bro. Because when the devil sees you doing the right thing, he tries to stop that. He doesn't want you to reach your purpose. He doesn't want you to do God's will. He wants to cause chaos. He wants to cause confusion. He wants to just take you out of the game, man. That's what the devil wants to do. 
Okay, so this is it right here, guys. This is one of the most deadliest sins, man. Pride. It even says right there, for pride is the beginning of sin. Pride. Okay, so put your pride to the side. Humble yourself. And this is why in this channel, in Mark the Messenger, we talk about fasting. Okay, that's how you humble yourself. Fasting. Don't look at yourself better than the next person just because you sin less. Because the Bible makes it clear. If a man says he's without sin, he's a liar and the truth is not, is not in him. Okay, so we're not out here acting holier than thou. We all fall short of God's glory, but we don't make we don't make excuses. Okay, we repent of our our, our, our shortcomings and, and our sins, and we get back up. We're not going to blame nobody but ourselves. Hold yourself accountable, and if you do fall short, blame yourself. Don't blame nobody else. No one put a gun to your head and say to do this, do that, get with that person, or be friends with that. No, you did it to yourself. So blame yourself. Never blame nobody, but this is how you grow in life. This is how you get to the next level. And we all know new levels, new devils. We all know that. Okay. When you're about to level up, when God got a big blessing for you, man, the devil's going to, he's going to manifest. He's going to use a weak vessel. Okay. He's going to, he's going to use somebody. He's going to use the closest person to you. He's going to use somebody who loved the most. Someone who's, who's deceived. Someone who's, who's foolish in their ways. Someone who doesn't have the Holy Spirit. Okay, someone who doesn't hearken to authority, okay, someone who doesn't hearken to the voice of the Lord, he's going to use them, and they won't even know that they're being used, man. That's the crazy part. They can't see it. They can't see. It's like I gave you guys that verse in Matthew chapter 13, verse 15. They have ears, but they hear not. They have eyes, but they see not. You, yeah, you can't win with certain people. Yep, Mitchell, you can't. Some people, you just can't win with them, man. You just can't, okay? So, yeah, that was number four. That was number four. Let's get on with number five. Man, they blowing up my phone right now, guys. My phone is getting blown up. But I'm not letting it distract me, man. I'm not letting that distract me because I understand that's what happens. <laughs> I understand that's what happens, man. Okay, so number If you guys can, if you guys are just now joining, uh, get the likes up for me. It's free to do that. So the video spreads out in the algorithm. More people can watch it. More people can wake up. And uh, if you can share it too, that'd be awesome. Share, share this with someone you're going through with. They need to hear this too, man. Hopefully this puts some sense in them. But unfortunately, guys, like I said earlier, like the brother Newbridge said, is that people are spiritually dying. They're spiritually dirty or they're already spiritually dead. So you can't reason with them. So don't share with those people. <laughs> uh, okay, so. All right, so number five is someone who's under, uh, someone who's in your life that's under the demonic influence is someone who's under demonic influence never takes accountability and they have a victim mentality. And this all, guys, this all stems from what? From pride. No, no take accountability, no, no, the victim mentality, that all stems from pride, man. Stubbornness, uh, stubbornness, okay? So when someone's under the demonic influence, they can't, they, they don't know that they're being used by a demon. They don't know that that spirit is, is keeping them in bondage. So of course they're not going to take accountability. Of course they're going to have the victim mentality and how they're the innocent, sweet one, and they did no wrong, and you're just the evil, evil demon, <laughs> you know? They're, they're going <laughs> to... This is what they do, okay? Even the Bible says that Satan is a false accuser of the brethren, okay? Let's actually go over that verse real quick. Okay, so, and uh, which one is it? Uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 10 to 11. It says, and I heard a voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. Okay, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuse them before our God day and night. When you're on the narrow path, when you're doing the right thing, you're going to have Satan manifest in a human. Okay, remember, because we're not battling it with flesh and blood and they're going to false accuse you. Okay, this is what they're going to do. And what's the, what's the whole purpose of the enemy doing that? Falsely accusing you is to get you to lose hope, to get you to lose faith. 
to get you to question your faith, okay? To get you to, you know, to get you to, you know, be weak, you know, because remember, to, to get to drain your energy, because like I said, guys, if you need energy to do God's will, you, you need it, okay? And I'm learning that, especially through these last possible months, you need it. If you don't have your energy drained, bro, you ain't gonna be able to do what God has called you to do. There can't be no distractions, man. Like, you gotta be 100% in it, 100% committed to this, man. So, um, yeah, man, when someone's under the, the demonic influence, they're not going to take accountability. A lot of y'all are dealing with this with individuals, man. And my best advice is just to go away from them, okay? Um, get, get far away as you can from these individuals. Because like I said, man, you don't want to keep company with these people. And there's also another Bible verse. I wanna, I, see, I'm not even planning to go over these Bible verses, guys, but the Spirit is moving, bro. The Spirit is definitely moving. So um, it is... Uh, Okay, so Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16 says, The man that wanders out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Okay, so even the book of Proverbs lets us know that there are people who are spiritually dead on this earth. And it lets us know that those who wander from the path of understanding, those who wander from the path of what the Holy Spirit is, is leading you to, okay, those who are wandering what God has placed you to do, and you, and you depart from all that, you're going to find yourself being friends, being around certain individuals who are spiritually dead. This is what's going to happen. Okay. This is what is going to happen 100%. Okay. So always keep that in mind. Okay. Do not wander out. Of, now, if this happens to you, okay, this has happened to me many times. Okay. One thing about me, I just keep it real. I, I don't, I don't portray myself as uh, or I don't want to portray myself as a holier than thou, someone who's who's so perfect, someone who never falls short. I don't want to portray myself as that. I never did. Some people look at me like that because you know I have a strong message. But at the end of the day, I'm a human too. I fall short too. I make mistakes just like you do. Okay. And I found myself when I wandered out of the path of understanding. I did find myself with those who were spiritually dead. Okay. Uh, now I know better. So now I you know I have more wisdom, and that'll, that'll never happen again. But back then it did happen. Okay, and it was all just a testimony. Everything that we go through in life, well, I can't speak for everybody. I only can speak for myself, but everything that I go through in my life, whether it's good or bad, it's all just a testimony. Okay, it's all just a testimony to edify the body of Christ, to let you guys know, you know, what might happen on your journey, what might happen on your walk. But it doesn't mean that if bad things are happening, it doesn't mean that you give up. It doesn't mean that you just quit and throw in the towel and go hang out with those who are spiritually dead. No, that if, if, if things are turning up, if spiritual warfare is turning up, you got to go harder, man. You got to go harder. Maybe go harder on the fasting. Go harder on the prayer. Uh, go harder on the worship. You got to go harder, bro. Like 100%. Okay, God doesn't like quitters. You got to finish the race. Okay, and aim to be the first place. Finish the race and aim to be the first. Talks about that in Corinthians. Okay, uh, so yeah, man. Someone says we're at 99 nine views. Oh, well, yeah, get the likes up. We got to get 1,000 likes, man. We got to do that. 100%. People get mad at me. They're like, oh, Mark, why do you why do you always tell people to like the video? So when you like the video, it spreads in the algorithm more so more people can watch it. It's not a vain thing. It's not like Instagram where I post a selfie and I want to get all these likes for no reason. That's This is a different purpose, okay? So a lot of people think of that. Like, this is like Instagram. This is YouTube. And this is how YouTube works, okay? Uh, so yeah, that's number five. Remember, get rid of the pride, guys. Be humble. Humble yourself. Like, some people, they just can't do it. Like they they just can't. I don't know why. I don't I don't know why because I can't relate to that. Like I I don't know. I don't know. Some people are different, bro. It is it is what it is, I guess. Okay. Um number six. Oh, this one's to be D. And I've dealt with this, guys. When number six, thank you for the super chat. C's for the kingdom. Appreciate you, man. I've dealt with this with many individuals, man. Talking about friends, family, relationships. I've dealt with this. Demons love to destroy everything you build, man. What does the Bible say about what the devil comes to do? He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. When someone's under the demonic influence, they, they, and some people they don't want to do, but they just can't help it. Why is this the demons ruling over them? They love to destroy everything you built, everything that you built from the ground up. You had no help. They knew that, you, and you did it by yourself. Now, of course, you had God's, you know, blessing, you know, and but you, yeah, you can have God's blessing, but you got to put in the work, okay? So all the work you put in, they're gonna try their hardest 
to slander, slander your name, to throw, to throw salt on your name. They're going to do the best that they can to to stop what God has, has he done. But, they, but the, what these people don't understand is, okay, God has anointed you, okay? God has called you. To, you, you know, many are called for your chosen. You were called. You were chosen for this. Okay, when God has, has, cho has chosen you for doing something, no one can stop what God has placed for you. This is what these demons, you know, what these people who are under the demonic influence don't understand, okay? Because the demons are just, you know, overtaking them. Okay, so this is the whole the whole goal of the enemy, guys. Demons love to destroy everything you build. That's how you know they're under demonic influence. Like I said, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what Satan comes to do. Okay, and you have to understand the people who are in your life who are under these demonic influence. Because I'm telling you, if you don't get away from these people, okay, if you don't get away from these people, you could find yourself just like Lot's wife. Because remember, Lot. The angels came to Lot. They said, hey, we got to go, bro. God's about to judge this place. It's about to burn uh, fire and brimstone, okay? And Lot could have easily been like, well, my wife left. My, my, my wife doesn't want to go, so I'm going to go with my wife. Lot could have easily done that, okay? My, my, my wife wants to be with the world. My wife wants to be friends with all these people. My wife wants to uh, uh, party, drink, smoke, all that, right? So Lot could have been like, you know, I, I'll come back with y'all later. I'll go mess with y'all later. I'm, I'll be right back. No, 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 okay? So... Lot was obedient. Lot knew that that person or his wife, that's crazy, his own wife, his own wife was like, nah, like, I'm not going to follow your lead. I'm not going to listen to you. Okay? Guess what happened to her? She was spiritually dead. Before she, before it manifested, before she became a pillar of salt. And, and I don't believe, right? I don't believe that that moment she became spiritually dead. I believe that she was disobedient to him for, the, for you know, a long period of time. Okay? Because if she was a righteous woman, she would have got saved. Okay, so, and someone said Job's wife too. Yeah, yep, yep, that's true, okay? Um, but with Lot's wife, I'm speaking a lot because, you know, better example. I'll talk about Job in a little bit, I guess. But So, Lot could have easily been like, nah, bro, like, um, you know, and he did that. He was like, nah, I'm going with the angels, okay? So, Lot's wife was spiritually dead, okay? He had the choice, and he picked the right choice. Now, Lot's wife, I don't know what her name was. I don't, know, I don't think the Bible says her name. Uh, but she became a pillar of salt, okay? Uh, same thing with um, with Job. Some, some, the brother mentioned Job, yeah. Okay, so it could even be your own wife, bro. It could even be your own though, your own person that you're sleeping next to. Okay, that could be the enemy. You don't want to surround yourself with these people, guys. These people are going to uh, take you down a wrong, dark path that, you know, you may never escape. You know, of course, if you have God, if you're obedient, God will always provide a way out, just like the Bible says. But uh, if you're, you know, in love with sin, you're flirting with sin, flirting with Satan himself, um, you know, drinking the cup of the devils, you know, you could find yourself in your own demise. So I, I don't want nobody to experience any of this, man, because like I said, you don't want to be putting yourself in a situation where this could be detrimental on your walk. And some guys, I know a lot of people who never recovered, man, on the six years of walking the narrow path. I know some people, guys, who have never recovered as they never got back up. The Bible says the righteous fall seven times, okay, and they, get, and they rise up and back again, again. But the wicked, they fall into their own calamity, okay? The wicked don't get back up. I've seen many people who used to be street preaching, who used to be, I mean, they were, they were more fired up than I am, okay? And they fell down, whatever it was, you know, and they never got back up, guys. And that's, that's, that's scary to think, you know, four or five years later, three years later, still, you know, like, that's crazy. Okay, and the more you find yourself in a pit of sin, the harder it is to get out. Why is that case, guys? Because you have all the strongholds that you that you brought into your life, all those unclean spirits, and then you gotta also think about the demons also come and manifest through the friends that you become friends with, and they keep you in that cycle, or maybe even relationships. Y'all live together, and it's just more chains, more bondage that, that you're putting upon yourself, and then now it's harder to become set apart because you put that upon yourself. You reap what you sow, okay, and. I don't want to be the foolish, you know, the Bible talks about the, the wise virgins. It's a parable that Christ spoke. Wise virgins and foolish virgins, okay? So the wise ones, they were prepared for the coming of the bridegroom. They were prepared for Christ to come back, right? They had oils in their lamp. The foolish ones, okay, that means they were in the light. They were keeping God's commandments, right? The foolish ones, um, they thought they had all this time in the world. The foolish ones thought that, hey, you know, um, the Lord delayed his coming, Okay. Um, they had, they had no oils in their lamp. That means they were in darkness. Okay. They were keeping company also with darkness too. And they weren't able to see when the Lord was coming back. So when the Lord did come back, 
and they knocked. Hopefully my neighbor don't get mad, but, and they knock, right? The Lord didn't answer, okay? And that's gonna be a lot of, because Christ didn't speak that parable for no reason. This is going to happen. You know, and those people who had, didn't have oils in their laps, they professed to be Christians. They professed to read the Bible. They professed to pray and, you know, um, you know listen to prayer groups and all that. They, they, they did all that, right? They professed that they knew God. But when they knocked, he wasn't answering, okay? You could fool people. You could fool your friends. You could fool your family or whatever, right? You could fool people, but you cannot fool God. You could put up a religious act. You could claim to be so righteous and holy to appear to be, but you can't fool God. You can't fool the almighty God. And many on that day, one of the scariest verses, it's not scary to me, but for those who ain't living right, this should be one of the scariest verses that you'll ever read in your life. Okay. Many will say to me, Lord, 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 have I not done this? Have I not done that? Cast out devils out of your name. Blah, 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 blah. Street preach, blah, blah, blah. But he will say, I never knew you. Okay. And those people... Who said, you know, well, Lord, I did this. I prophesied in your name. I did this. What those people were the whole time were number four. They were nothing but religious spirits. I have no space, but y'all y'all could read what I'm saying. They were nothing but religious spirits. Okay. Remember, I told you guys earlier, religious spirits don't know God just because they could give you guys a couple of Bible verses that they don't even follow. Okay. Uh, just because they may appear to be righteous on the outside. Doesn't matter, bro. Don't be fooled, guys. Don't be fooled. Someone said experience is a very hard lesson. Yeah, but that's the cost of wisdom. Okay, that's that's the cost of wisdom. Wisdom is experience. The Bible even says that in order to become wise, you got to become a fool. So that means you have to gain experience. You have to make mistakes. And so in order to learn from it. Now, when we make mistakes, we don't keep on repeating the mistakes. When we cut someone off, someone off we don't keep on going back to that person because what's going to happen? What's going to happen? You know, the same thing is going to, the pattern is going to repeat. So cut it off before worse comes to happen. Okay. Now I'm not now use your now use your wisdom discernment. I'm not out here to say, you know, you should never bring back people in your life. You know, of course you want to pray about it and ask God for what, you know, what's the plan. But um I know for the most part, um, it's it's mostly, you know, gotta let the dead bury the dead, man. You just gotta you gotta do it. And um someone says, Can I ask God for visions? Yeah, why not? Why why can't you ask God for visions? Uh, you could ask God to give you a prophetic dream. You could ask God to give you, you know, anything that's linked to his will. So, yeah, if you want a vision that's linked to the end times uh, or maybe whatever you're going through in your life uh, to sh or to reveal someone's true intentions to you, to reveal someone, yeah, ask God. You should. You definitely should uh, be doing that. Someone says uh, sh sh Sabbath day today. Yeah, yeah, it is a Sabbath day. God will show you up. Um, Jake says, how do I break the stronghold of childhood trauma, Mark? Um, uh, forgive people. Whoever caused that trauma upon you, uh, forgive them. And you got to really, really, I mean, don't just say forgive them because, oh, forgive, right? No, actually forgive them and actually bless them. Hope that they prosper. Hope that they win in life. Hope that God, I hope that God blesses them. Hope that God forgives them. That's the best thing you could do to, um, if, if you're dealing with any childhood trauma, um, like from people in your past or whatever, forgive them and bless them. Um, because if you have a grudge in someone in your heart, uh, that could, that could stunt your growth. That could actually stop your blessings. Okay. Uh, you don't want you don't want to be, have grudges for no, nobody. You don't want to hate on nobody. That's a waste of time. So just bless them and, uh, you know, pray that God, you know, does them well. We have, we need, we have over, we have over a thousand people in here. If we can match the likes to a thousand Someone says, I forgot. It's a Sabbath day. It's all good. It's all good, man. Now you know. It's all good, man. Um, Solomon asked God for wisdom, and God gave him wisdom and other things that he didn't ask for. Absolutely. Yeah, never be afraid to ask God stuff, man. Uh, never be afraid of that. Um, never be afraid of that, man. Uh, yes, forgiveness is huge. Remember, it was demonic spirits using them. Forgive them. That's how you overcome. Yeah, that's true, Heidi. That is true. Uh, yes, pure heart, Psalms 51. When God speaks to you in your right ear, it's like no other experience on earth. Uh, thank you. Oh, Pat, I thought you were a mod here. Let me make you a mod. Um, we're going to get some mo more moderators in here too, guys. Um, I thought you were... Oh, no, you're a mod on my other channel. Speaking of my other channel, make sure you guys subscribe to Mark the Messenger Live. 
that's where I uh, be going. I go lives in there too, but I, I haven't been doing lives on this channel as much, so I've been switching it up. But all right, let's go on. Uh, wait, let's read this verse real quick. Someone left a verse. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 says, Ask, and it will be given unto you. Seek, and you will find. And knock, and the door uh, will be opened to you. Yep, that's facts. Yep. All right, number seven. Okay, so let's, let's break it down real quick. For those who are just now joining, because I broke it down, like, most of them and, you know, live stream people that just joining late or whatever. Uh, talk about Flat Earth. Actually, I have a video on Flat Earth. Um, I'm a believer in Flat Earth, 100%. But anyways, let's break it down. Number one is you can no longer reason with them, okay? When you can no longer speak truth, when you can no longer speak life into someone, when you no longer be, reason with them, give them logic, you can no longer reason with them is because they're spiritually dead or they're spiritually dying. Okay, you have to be able to discern that. Okay, when they can no longer reason with you, especially when it comes to like a relationship and you're the leader, okay, and they that, that the woman that you're with, she can't listen to you. It's just, it's you got to keep it pushing. All right, number two is you can no longer make peace with them. Okay, um, when you try to cut, which goes on number three, when peace is made, they will look for problems to stir up turmoil. So let's say y'all in peace together. And like a couple of days later, a couple of weeks or a couple of months, they just can't help it. And that's just a demonic influence because what does the devil come to do? He wants to destroy when two people come together. He wants to destroy and, and, and work to the weaker, the work to the mind. Okay. Even the Bible says that women are the weaker vessels. So Satan's not going to go to the man first. He's going to go to Eve first. Okay. Even in the garden, we could all learn from Adam and Eve. There's so much you can, gems and wisdom that you can learn from Adam and Eve. Okay. So the devil knew that he couldn't go to Adam. First, okay, the devil knew that he had to use Eve to get to him. Okay, Eve fell for the bait. Now, and Adam, see, the Bible doesn't say Adam was deceived. Adam just wanted to please his wife. Okay, this is what we talk about simp nature, beta male nature, letting a woman fall, uh, lead you and, and guide you. That's where Adam went wrong. Okay, so Eve was deceived and Adam just wanted to please his wife. He literally spiritually died. And this is what happened in today, guys. You see a whole bunch of men literally trying to make an ungrateful uh, woman who's un. un ungrateful happy who's literally just leading himself to the slaughter just to make her happy and let's keep it real guys this is an adulterous nation most of these women have already had multiple men before you and they're gonna have multiple men after you but you're out here killing yourself to literally please that woman it just doesn't make sense okay it just doesn't doesn't make sense that's what a lot of men are doing bro they're doing that okay so that's what will happen to look for you know uh turmoil to start, start up after you came up with solutions okay and you know that's just demons is the number four as they'll use God and Jesus and Bible verses to rebuke or to condemn, but are hypocrites, okay? And these are just religious spirits, okay? Remember when the Bible talks about how when, uh, you know, as people will say, many in this day will say, Lord, Lord, haven't I done this? Haven't I cast out devils, preach the gospel to people, blah, 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 blah. And he'll say, I never knew you. He's, talk, he's not talking about the Hindu person. He's not talking about the Muslim, the Islam. Uh, no, he's talking about Bible believers, and these are people who are religious spirits. They don't have the spirit of truth in them. They have a religious spirit. This is, guys, most people most people out here who call themselves Christians and all that, bro, or Israelites, shalom, psh, cap, bros, cap, I'm telling y'all, 95% of these people ain't really about this walk, bro. I'm just keeping it real. 100% is cap, it's lies. I can see through the fakeness, bro. They just got a religious mask on, and they're fooling the sheep. I'm not a sheep. I'm not a goat. I'm a lion. I can see through it. I can see through, I can see through the lies, okay? And I can easily be like a Pharisee and condemn and rebuke. I keep it, when I'm judging righteously, that's what we're called to do, I keep it to myself. I don't judge to condemn someone or to put them down. No, for what? I can see through the lies. And guys, you want to get to a level? If you're a new believer, it's okay because as long, if you keep walking with Christ, you keep walking with God, he's going to bless you with spiritual gifts. He's going to increase your discernment. He's going to increase your wisdom your knowledge, the gift of prophecy, the gift of healing. He's going to increase that. He's going to increase the Holy Spirit in you, man. The more you keep walking with him, he's going to bless you. Just like how the devil could bless people too with useless things and materialism, God, could, God blesses you with spiritual things that's going to equip you on this walk. Okay, so please keep that in mind. So when that is happening, when you see uh, people who who act like they're, I guess I tell you, I can see through it all, bro. I can see through it all, man. It's just fake. These people ain't really real. And hey, Christ was out here flipping tables. Christ was out here calling the fake too. He was out here calling the phonies too. That's why they didn't like him. He was truly set apart, guys. If you can't call yourself set apart, if everybody wants to be friends with you, all the people of the world they love hitting you up. They love they love chilling with you. They love hanging out. They, you know they love partying with you, drinking with you, right? 
smoking, which is nothing to do all that, but you, you're not attracting no other people who are set apart in your life, you gotta really question yourself. Okay, because me guys, people of the world, they don't they don't really like and that's okay. They don't like me, that's okay. I understand my spirit irritates their demons, and that's all good. But people who are of the faith, people who are really of a, of truth. Okay, not just a religious nonsense, the truth. Okay, those people gravitate towards me. People who really stand firm on truth, people who are hated by thousands of people, maybe even millions of people, okay, because they stand on truth. Those are the people who I gravitate towards too, because I'm hated by many. Why? Because I speak truth. Okay, even the Bible says that, uh, let's read that. Matthew chapter 34, 36, okay. It says, think not that I come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I come to send a man again, uh, at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes, a man's enemies shall be of his own household. Your own enemies will also be in your own household. So it's like, dang, your enemies are, are in your own house. When you, when you go out, when you leave your house, you got people who are enemies too because, you know, most people that on Babylon, guys, are under the demonic influence. So it's like everywhere you go, for the most part, you know, people are looking down on you. It's a, it's a spiritual thing, though, so that's why we don't really take it, you know, take it to heart, okay? But yeah, someone said in their house, yeah, that's coming. Yep, in your own house, man. Truth sounds like hate to those who hate truth. Yeah, yep, that's facts. I, I used to tell the truth, then you get persecution, Luke chapter 6. Man, been hated by my whole family and too, and too many strangers. Yeah, man. Press the thumbs up button so it can spread through the algorithm. Thank you, man. Appreciate you, uh, Dylan. Uh, someone says, hey, Big Brother Mark, I am drawing closer to God day by day by praying, reading, and trying to obey God's word through your teachings. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate you, man. And they keep on following after wisdom too. I see your name's wisdom. Keep keep doing that, man. That's why so many people moved in the Bible. Yeah. Oh yeah. If you if you actually read the Bible, um, they they never stayed in one location. Even Jesus. Jesus is always traveling. Okay, and that's what a man is supposed to be doing. I feel like a man, you know, once you reach a certain age, you should be traveling. You shouldn't be staying in the house all day. Okay. Nowadays, you know, the woman out here got you men turning into house cats. You know, you can't even leave your house for a day without them, you know, questioning us. Like, what the heck? Like, bro, like they, they don't they don't let you do it. But back in the days, back when it was more man were men. Nowadays, guys, a man or a woman and the woman are men. This is all Satan's design. Make it backwards. Let the woman be in rulership over the man and let the man submit to his woman. OK, that's what Satan wants. OK, it's always the opposite of what God wants. Everything that's in the Bible, Satan perverts and does the opposite. OK, because he knows that's how destruction is caused. He knows that. This is how all hell is going to break loose on the earth. And that's what happens. Okay. So let's go with number seven, though. And it's kind of basic, but I'll give you guys the example. Hold on. Okay, so number seven is your life will continue to go downhill until you remove them, okay? And what do I mean by that? If you're, if you're living with someone who is spiritually dead, who is under the demonic influence, remember, what is the whole goal of the demons, the devils, okay? Is to take you out of the game, man, to destroy you. So you may find yourself in jail, in prison, in a mental institution, you might, you might find yourself under persecution, okay? And that's because, that's because of this right here, okay? Bad things will continue. And see, you gotta understand, God allows this to happen. God, God allows it all to happen because he warned you about the individual. He told you what they're really about. You didn't take heed. You didn't want to listen, okay? You may not want to listen to the people. Once you don't listen to God, that's when judgment is, it stores up. So yes, guys, you may find yourself having to pay thousands of dollars, okay? You know, you're losing. It's like every time you're with this person, you lose and they win because they're feeding off your energy. You're draining, you're getting drained and they're just continuing feeding off your energy. So they just keep on winning and you just keep on losing. It was like, wait, what the heck? You know, you're the one who's putting the work. You're the one who's sacrificing. And the minute you remove them out of your life, you're going to be able to sleep better at night, okay? You're going to be able to start doing what's your purpose, what God has called you to do because, you remove them, you need to remove the dead weight out of your life. 
Okay, so guys, don't hesitate. I understand some people, you know, I understand it could be your mom, your dad, and you know, I was going through a lot of that and then my big in stages in my walk, but I moved. I moved moved out of my mom's house. Okay. Uh Mark, can can someone feed off your energy through the screen? Um you know, all this, you know, the, your phones, your televisions, your computers, your laptops, it's all just portals, okay? What you're watching can can dictate how your day goes. Um, it could, you know, there's lots of stuff that it can do. That's why you got to be careful about what you're watching, not just the children. Obviously, the children too as well, but even you yourself, okay? Be careful what you're watching and even what you're listening to because, yes, it's all but just portals and, you know, a demon can jump on you from that. 100%. If you're out here watching, you know, corn, okay, don't be don't be surprised that the demon of lust comes onto you and now now you find yourself you can't stop watching it. Now the stronghold gets built up. So yeah, you got to be, you know, be, be even the Bible says to, to guard your eyes. I will set no wicked thing upon my eyes. Uh that's in uh, the book of Psalms 101. Okay? So, uh absolutely be very cautious of what you're watching, what you're listening to. What do you, it's just like what the food we eat, right? We got we to we gotta monitor what we eat. We're not going to be eating a 1,000 sugar grams a day. We're not going to be eating nothing but candy bars a day because we know that bad things could happen. Maybe you might get, you know, diabetes or something or maybe like, you know, heart, something like that, something of that nature, right? It's the same thing what you're, what you're constantly listening to. If you're listening to low vibrational music all day, don't be surprised if you find yourself doing low vibrational-ish, okay? Same thing if you're watching uh, drama shows all day. Don't be surprised if your life is nothing but drama. Okay, if you if you if you watch you know horror movies, don't be surprised if your life is a horror movie. You know someone's out to kill you. I know it's a lot of, a lot of about women, right? They love watching the the shows where they have um like the murderer type. You know that like the guy who wants to kill his some girl or whatever. Like women, like, they love watching that type of stuff, and they don't even understand when you watch the type of stuff. The, the type of man you're gonna attract is gonna be those type of men. The the, the people who I, I'm I've seen this many times. The woman, I, the woman I've been with who were just crazy in the head, they were always watching this type of shows. I was like, why, why, why do you watch this, bro? And now I understand all their ex-boyfriends are all psychopaths. But that's what they attract because that's what you're listening to, you know? So always keep that in mind, man. And uh, yeah, so this is it. So, uh, your life will continue to go downhill until you remove them out of your life. Okay, these are the seven signs, someone who's influenced with demonic possessions. If anyone wants to screenshot it, you can screenshot it right there. Okay, so attract the dramas like that. I used to watch these when I wasn't saved with my GF. Oh damn, man. Um, someone says everything is energy exchange. Feed your soul well, pray, be you eat, always bless your food. Um, eyes are the window to your soul. Don't entertain foolishness. Trying to get my daughter off this crap. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, definitely. Um, attract the drama like that. Yeah. Mark, will conviction be bad when I need to move out? Yeah. When I was living in my last apartment, bro, this is what God did, man. Um, so I, I had a new neighbor moved into me. Uh, he lived ac across from me and it was a cool dude. He was like, a, um, he was from Texas, some black dude. He was like in his fifties or something like that. He's like an OG or maybe in his sixties. And he, he was, like I said, he was a cool dude. And I remember I, we, we used to chop it up and stuff like that. He said he wants to buy like land and stuff. And um, I remember I was living in a low income um, apartment. This is like literally last year. Last year this happened, right? No, it was 2000. Was it? I think, well, yeah, it was like the beginning of last year, somewhere on that time. And he told me, he told me, he was like, um, yeah, I just moved in, blah, blah, blah. And um, like within like a week or two weeks later, there was like a whole bunch of flies in his house. Like I'm telling you guys, or moths, like his house was dirty. I remember one, one night I asked him for water. It was like, it was like 11 PM or something like that. I had no water or no, it was late. It was like two in the morning and everything, every place was closed. And, uh, and the gas station is usually 24 seven next to me, but for whatever reason they were closed that day and I had no water and I'm not going to drink fossil water because that's nothing but fluoride and garbage. And I, I knocked at his door and he was always up late too. So I knocked at his door and I remember him open. I was like, Hey, I was like, Hey bro, can I get some water? And I felt so sorry for the dog. The dog there looked like, oh, it was, it was horrible. And when he opened his door, bro, I've never seen a dirtier house, room, whatever, apartment ever in my life. It was the most dirtiest place. I mean, you could smell it outside the door, even when the door is closed, bro. And once he opened it, a whole bunch of flies came out. Like, I'm telling you, like, I'm telling you, like, a, over, like, 100 moths. They all flew out. 
And those moths were getting into my room, guys. They, and I lived, he lived right here, I live across from him. And those moths were getting in my room. And like I said, this is a low income apartment. I'm not supposed to be living, I'm not supposed to be living there no more. I was living there for three years, okay? And I, was, I actually had enough money by then too to actually move out, but I was getting comfortable because, you know, this low rent at the time and uh, all that. So um, yeah, that's, that's when I decided I, ha I had to get out of here. All those moths came, they were eating my food. I mean, it was disgusting, guys. I was living there for about a week or two weeks later. I remember I called my mom, I was like, mom, I gotta move back in for a little bit because I can't live here no more. I showed her pictures and videos. And yeah, that guy's room was, I mean, it was horrible, man. Like it was, it was bad, man. So yes, God will give you those signs. Literally guys, it felt like the Egypt plagues came into my room. Like God did not want me there no more. I mean, that place was, was very demonic too. There was a whole bunch of witches who lived there and warlocks. I mean, I heard a lot of stories. People, there's a whole bunch of stuff. But anyway, I don't know how I got to that talking point. But yes, someone asked, someone asked that question. Absolutely. Uh, God will definitely, you know, give you a uh, warning signs. I know it wasn't a play, guys. It was just moss, but still. Uh, how old was I when I moved out? I was 25. Yeah, I think it was, yeah, I was 25 years old. Yeah, I was 25. Uh, but someone said, bro, demons don't like to clean. Yeah. But anyways, we made it past an hour long, man. These are the seven signs someone in your life is under the demonic influence. You guys made it this far. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, share the video. Also, if you want to get notified when I make my next video, I'm going to be making the next video pretty soon. It's going to be the hidden books of the Bible that were removed. I made a short about this. If you guys want to check out the short version, it's on my main channel. But I'm going to be making the actual video format because on YouTube, you can only do uh, one minute shorts. And there's so much only I could say within a minute long. So I'm actually going to do a video format. There are books that were removed from the Bible. There are verses that are removed in certain translations. And I feel like this deserves a video to talk about because a lot of people are unaware of that. So, uh, yeah, someone said, please don't end it yet. Bro, I've been live for over an hour. What else do you want me to say? What else do you want me to say? My whole whiteboard is filled up, man. Um, so, yeah, someone says, can you explain? Thank you for the super chat. Can you explain Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 28? Leave that verse on it. Um, yeah, leave that verse on it. Um, you know what? Since I'm, someone said, well, I'll, I'll read that verse real quick for you. I'll read that verse real quick. So, uh, Ecclesiastes. All right, so it says, says, which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not. One man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those have I not found. Okay, so to the person who left that super chat, uh, pretty much this is talking about King Solomon. Uh, we, we know that he had 700 wives and 300 concubines, okay? So out of all the wives and concubines he has, he didn't find, out of all of them, can you believe that? A thousand women, not one of them were righteous, okay? But out of all the men that he built with, that he, you know, he established lands with, that he break, broke bread with, that he preached with, and whatever the case is, he only found one, one man out of the thousand men, only one righteous man. And all the women he had, not one of them was righteous, okay? And you got to and you add, just add some context to this because when, when this was written, this was in Israel. This is when where people were actually keeping God's laws and commandments. People, they, the, the land wasn't defiled like it is over here in the Babylon. So what makes you think of King Solomon, who had everything that woman lust and desire for, right? He had every all the material stuff, whatever, right? He had everything that Eve wanted in life. But even he couldn't find one righteous woman. Even all the wives he got from God, the concubines, he still couldn't find one righteous woman. So that's what that verse means. It means that you're not gonna find many people who are walking, who are really about this truth. You're not gonna find much. That's what it means, okay? King Solomon didn't have, didn't get have all the, you, this is crazy. I'm glad you left this verse. I was actually gonna end this. I'm so glad you did. So I had the thousand women, bro. There was not one. There was not one righteous one. And even all the men, out of all the men he knew, there was only one. So it lets me know that this, this way is truly narrow. There's not many people on here. Like I told you guys, 95% of people are religious spirits. They don't have the spirit of the truth. They play a good act. They could, they, could, they, could, they could fool the sheep. They could fool the goats. They ain't gonna fool me. I could see past the religious spirit, man. But anyways, this is like, oh, this is a long video, man. But I'll see you guys soon. Hopefully by Monday, if not tomorrow. Hopefully by Monday, I'll make a video. But if you guys got edified from this video, y'all know what to do. Like, subscribe, all right, I'm out. Peace.